Hi, my name's Dan, hope you're doing well today. In this lesson, I'm gonna show you how to create a number of rock riffs. We're gonna make them from scratch, but basically we're gonna be looking at the time signature, the tempo, the scale, and kind of what mood we want to create. So let's start off really, really simple. Let's take. That's just a scale, that's a minor pentatonic. Actually, it's a blue scale, it's a minor blue scale. If you take a minor pentatonic, and add a flat five into that. You actually have a scale that's been used in just millions of rock riffs. So I think that's a good place to start. So we've got that, let's just pick a tempo. I'm not tabbing any of this out. I'm not, I'm, I'm just making this up on the spot and that's what I want you to try and do as well. So we've got our scale, shape, learn that. Then let's pick a tempo. Let's go back that fast. Four, four, so one, two, three, four. A riff is a repeating pattern. That sounds all right, let's try that. So two Gs. I'm going just up the scale. So far, not too difficult. G, B flat, C. That note there, the flat five, that makes it a blues scale, that adds a lot of tension and you hear it a lot in rock. So I just did that flat five, which is a D flat. Then to the D, which is on the fifth fret to the C, coming down the scale now. Bit of vibrato there, just to add a little bit of flair and attitude in there. And I'm also digging in quite heavily with my, with my finger style technique, round about sort of here. Let's work with exactly the same idea and rev it up a little bit. So it was the same riff and that bit there, just going to the same set of notes, the same scale, just up a little bit. Up. So I know my G which is the key we're in, that's the root note. I know that it's on the 10th fret of the A string. You must know your note. That's the same scale. I also know that if I start sort of with my third finger on the G, the notes of the scale lie very nicely there. So I've got a G, B flat and a C, and an F. And I slid into the G, so, can slide from anywhere. I'm going for a big one here. So I'm sliding third finger landing on the 10th fret, that G. Hammer on there. That's when you pluck and hammer down on the higher pitched note. And again, vibrato. This is rock. I want it to sound really sort of, you know, strong and, you know, punchy. Let's do a funk rock kind of chili peppers riff and let's stay in the same key. Yeah, let's go that sort of vibe. Now I'm going one, two, three, four. And here I'm going chick, 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 chick. These are 16th note uh, swing rhythms, okay? So straight 16ths are you've got 16 in a bar and adding in a bit of swing here which I think is a great sort of feel so digga digga every single beat has got that so it doesn't matter what style of music you play in it doesn't matter what um you know what tempo you need to have a very good idea of the subdivision of the of the bar of the beats and that's what I mean here so every single beat it's got this. We don't have any drum beats or anything going on in this lesson, but you, you have to, you know, be the drum beat, hear it. So. Okay, I added in a note there. 
It's a Dorian mode, so let's do that. So we've got our feel, we've got our tempo, we've got our 16th note swing feel, and now I want a different collection of notes. You can use actually everything I taught you from the previous riff. It will work. This, which is a Dorian mode, G Dorian. Okay, here it is. Keep things simple. Root, flat seven, which is the E, and the octave, which is the G. When you play, by the way, don't, don't do that when you're playing in a band or recording. I'm just doing it to show you where the beats are, right? Now that E, it's the sixth note, okay? And that is a major sixth, and it sounds really good against the flat seven. So. It sounds a bit flea-esque, doesn't it? So we're just going G and then these notes here, F, G, F, E. You can do loads of really great, funky, rocky riffs with this. The Dorian mode just sounds like funk. In fact, if you listen to Blood Sugar Sex Magic, my favorite Red Hot Chili Peppers album, the whole album is pretty much minor pentatonic, blues scale, and Dorian. And you really have to listen to bass lines like that to get that connection, and I recommend that you do. Let's do the same thing with a little bit more somewhere at the top here. So I just did the same thing as before, really. G, B flat, C. That's just the first three notes of the minor pentatonic scale, which sounds like smoke on the water. And I just did some sort of slidey thing to the next note. Back down again. These are articulations, slides, bends, hammer-ons, pull-offs, and all these kind of techniques. That's a slide downwards. The, I talk about flair and attitude a lot, and in rock music, that that's what you need. And that kind of translates to how you attack the notes, how you, you know, how you how you play, whether you're playing with a plectrum and your hammer-ons and all that kind of stuff, you know, really, really translates well to this kind of style of music. Okay, I literally just made up another one. Here we go. All I've done here is I've gone up a whole step to A, A minor. And you need to know your shapes the pentatonic scale is fantastic for for rock. I'll link to other videos and shapes that I've got of this. You need to learn it. So here I was just going. I added in a little power chord there. And this is on the C third fret A string. Power chord is basically a root note and a fifth played together at the same time. You can strum it, you can go up, you can go down. Just make sure you're muting the other strings. So here I've got the tip of my first finger on the underside of the E, and I've got the sort of the bottom of my first finger backing off onto the G string. So they're muted now. When you're composing and constructing riffs, this is quite a good idea. Now you don't have to play the power chords, but when you're playing with a guitarist, um, probably more likely a guitarist than kind of other instruments, they'll be playing chords. So you can you can kind of preview how it's going to sound by adding in some power chords. I'll show you. <laughs> Even if, as I say, you're not adding those in, you can start to hear the bigger picture by doing that. Let's run with that idea a little bit more. And again, a riff is a repeating pattern, so we want something, it's more a case of taking away notes. And this is almost like a live me making something up, but this is the kind of thing you can do as well. What about that? So I'm going A, G, A to a C, 
quite slow now. Kind of a classic rock type of a thing here. Um, let's do this. Actually, that's a rip-off, isn't it, of Carry On Wayward Son by Kansas. Doing the same rhythm, A, G, A, C. Same thing then to D, and then same thing again, but jumping to the octave. And this is just blues scale again, so I'm not doing anything different from before. You really need to learn the blues scale if you like this kind of music, because it is used a lot, and you can use it a lot. Let's take our formula of scale, technique, mood, and time signature, play around with that a little bit. Let's go metal, let's go something a bit more metal. Let's choose a darker scale. Now this is a Phrygian mode. Don't worry if you don't really understand what modes are. They're just scales from within scales. The major scale has seven modes. The th uh, if we take C major, the third note is E. And if we play the notes of C major, but starting on E, so E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. We get this Phrygian mode. And it has a minor second between the first and the second note. It sounds like Jaws and it sounds very evil. That's what I mean by dark. So that's what we're, that's the direction we're heading in now. And it's a good idea to think in these terms when you're composing riffs, but also to know this when you're listening to music, you can, you can almost immediately hear. You know, a, a flat second might tell you that it's a Phrygian key, so it helps with that as well. So let's um, let's play around with that. I'm in E, and you've got an open low E string, which which helps. Let's do something like that. So I'm in four, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Pushing that note again, dun, 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 dun. I'm doing a low E, a high E on the seventh fret of the A string. I've got my flat seven. I'm not thinking that it's a flat seven, whatever. I've just got a D two frets lower than that. And those notes on their own sound great. It's only when you get to that F that it starts to sound a little bit tense. Let me do something different when we get to one, two, three, four. Let's do two bars of four. One, two, three, four. That's one bar. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, it's two bars of four. And then let's do something controversial in the third bar. Uh, prog. This is a bit prog. This is a bit of progressive rock. They tend to use, you know, bands like Dream Theater, they tend to use odd time signatures. So 4-4 four, four is a common time signature, and it's very predictable. An odd time signature is something like 7-8. Seven, 7-8 eight. Seven, eight means you have seven eighth notes in a bar. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Let's figure something out. Actually, let's simplify things a bit more. Let's do one bar of four like this. That can be our riff, okay? Low E, high E, low E like this. Okay, and then... D, E, so that's one, two, three, four, four's a rest. And then let's put in a bar of seven, eight. That's good enough. So that's low E, high E, and low E again, well, that's three notes. And then the D on the fifth fret can be our fourth note. Four, five, six, seven, that'll do, so D, F, E, D. So slowly that bar would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can split that up into a four and a three. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. And you get this kind of odd, it's it's odd number. It's also odd feeling. And let's do that. Let's do the four, four, and the seven, eight. Four, 
four, four is essentially eight, eight, right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so that's like prog does things like that, which it is why it divides people. It's not easy listening. Um, some people joke that it's music meets math. I personally love it. That is a prog riff. Get your different time signatures going and your slightly darker sounding modes or scales. Let's go back to something slightly simpler. Let's do this scale, but across a string. That's just A natural minor or A aeolian if you want to get fancy with its modal name. Let's use, I'm going to use a plectrum for this as well. This is kind of like a muse idea is just, you know, having an open string. That the plectrum gives you that harder, more direct, it's, you know, made of plastic or Tortex, this one. You get that clicky sound, so that's cool. I'm just sticking to, to this one string, you know. That's the octave. I need to know the notes, which is, by the way, they're just A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. I need to know them in that direction, but also equally as comfortably in the other direction. I'm just going. I'm doing quite insistent downs. One, two, three, four. But doing down up to get faster. Uh, my, my speed here, my tempo. downs and down ups if you're going with a plectrum if not you can literally play any note and it'll sound good let's stick with the plectrum so i'm just keeping the plectrum just going very consistently and just shifting up and down It's a good way actually to learn the notes as you're going because it's just A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A or in reverse. So you just you know, make sure you know the patterns, make sure you know the notes and just hit them and it will always sound good. And you can not be so predictable, you can just jump around, but any of those notes will work. Drop D tuning is a staple of rock music. And that's just where you get your E string and you tune it down one whole step. In the absence of a tuner, I'm just using my ear here. So now that we're in drop D, there's a few things we can do. So we've got a low note here. Let's use fingers. You can do a similar thing to what I did before, but just run up and down the A string and then pedal the low D. Or we can just... Patterns shift a little bit when you do this, but that was minor pentatonic. And whatever you expect it to be on the next string, it's two frets lower because we've tuned to drop D. So that's an idea just to make the riff heavier is drop D. Justin Chancellor from Tool uses this drop D tuning a lot in their songs. And he comes up with all manner of riffs where you can just be pedaling on a D. You get this kind of high interesting thing going on. He does this incredible power chord where you do a low D, a fretted D on the fifth fret of the A, open D, and a high D on the seventh fret of the G string. He uses that minor second a lot just to get a lot of dark sound. So drop D, that's a really great thing to do to come up with amazing riffs. I'm currently writing a book on rock bass, 100 bass lines in the style of famous players like Justin Chancellor, John Myung, uh, John Entwistle, lots of Johns, just loads of amazing bass players. And, you know, doing that, I'm going to do a lot more videos sort of in this vein. I'll probably take some of the ideas from this lesson and just dive a lot deeper into that as, as I go. This was just a bit of a sort of a, a quick dive into it, making stuff up on the spot. Um, partly to show you that if you if you can think of, you know, a tempo, a time signature, 
a scale, which is really just a collection of notes that convey a certain mood or a colour. If you can think about these things, perhaps think about technique or do I use a plectrum, thumb, all of these things. What, what you know, hammer-ons and articulations do you use? Just by thinking down those terms and also listening to music and hearing what great players are doing, you can kind of bring these ideas together and come up with your own things really easily. And that's kind of the, the aim of a lot of my lessons is to give you that information. So you probably do have any questions. If you do, please do let me know. I'll get back to you. And other than that, thanks so much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel. I do two of these types of lessons every week and I'll see you next time.